Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Ian Roth. And I'm Tracy McRae. If you develop right-sided pain in your abdomen, it could be the telltale sign of appendicitis. Appendicitis is an inflammation of the appendix, which is a finger-shaped pouch that projects from your colon on the lower right side of your abdomen. If you have appendicitis, you probably assume you're headed for surgery. And in a lot of pain. That's the other thing I always assume. But a recent study in Finland found that treatment with antibiotics can be an option in some cases, helping people avoid surgical removal of the appendix, known as an appendectomy. We know that from lots of TV shows, of course. Here to discuss is Mayo Clinic Trauma and Critical Care Specialist, Dr. Erica Loomis. Welcome to the program, Dr. Loomis. It's great to meet you. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. Well, the first thing that we noticed, that we've learned... <laughs> is that an appendix is not a kidney. Yeah. Both, both Ian and I thought it was a kidney-shaped well, thing. A kidney-shaped separate organ. It's connected to the colon. That was the first thing we learned. It actually <laughs> hangs right off the right colon. Yep. Yep. It's its own little entity, but is attached to the colon. So why is it that it's even there? If you can take it out and it's not a big deal, why do we even have an appendix? Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, it's a vestigial organ, um, which means, you know, created years and years ago when humans were developing. It doesn't serve any purpose these days. Um, some think it was some type of additional digestive organ way back when, when we had different diets or different lifestyles, like back caveman days we're talking. Um, but today it doesn't do anything for us, um, except potentially get appendicitis. You can also get cancer within there. So it's okay to have it removed. We don't remove it unnecessarily. We don't just take them out if you don't need to have the surgery, but if you do need surgery, then it's, you will notice no difference once your appendix is removed. Hmm. What, what can cause the problems with your appendix, the inflammation? Yeah, so as you kind of described in the opening, it's a finger-like projection that comes off the colon, and it has an opening at the mouth of it, if you will, that connects it to the colon. And if that gets obstructed or something goes in there that closes off that opening, it can set up a pattern of inflammation and swelling, and it gains... Uh, collects fluid in there and then increases inflammation and you kind of can see it just starts to spiral and you get what's called appendicitis. And so does trauma to the body happen? Not necessarily. Okay. It doesn't mean that you got hit with anything. You don't necessarily do anything that causes you to get that. It just happens. It's spontaneous or happens at random, um, can affect all age ranges, children to elderly, all different, you know, backgrounds. If you have hypertension or you don't, it doesn't matter. Anybody can get appendicitis. And what are the warning signs? Yeah. Um, so kind of like you mentioned in the opening, right-sided pain is classic. Uh, not everybody has that, but most people do. A lot of people describe pain that kind of starts around their belly button and then migrates to that right side. Um, that's pretty classic for appendicitis. A lot of people have nausea. Some have vomiting. You usually just don't feel very well or malaise, we call that. Uh, some people have a fever and the pain is such that it typically brings them to the emergency department. And then, so somebody comes in with these symptoms, maybe how are you going to diagnose it? Classically, or at this point, you know, we diagnose with a, with a CT scan or a CAT scan. It's probably the best way to diagnose appendicitis. It's certainly not the only way. Ultrasound is definitely up and coming. Ultrasound can be very um, technician dependent and radiologist reading dependent. So not everybody is a great candidate for that, but we do ultrasound or we do a CAT scan. If it's not just diagnosed soon enough? Will an uh, appendix always burst? Yeah, we used to think that. We used to think if you get appendicitis and we don't do something, it's definitely going to burst. But that's actually something that came out of this study, that not all appendixes end up bursting. Yeah, so let's talk about that. How, yeah. I never knew that that was even an option. Yeah, to do antibiotics. Right. So they actually did their initial study, as you mentioned, it's coming out of Finland, um, probably one of the only places they could do a study like this. Um, and their initial study was this is the five-year update that came out right now. So their initial results came out in 2013, or completed in 2013 and published in 2015. And what they found is with some conditions in there for age and the appearance of the appendix and some things like that, they treated about half the patients with antibiotics, a very uh, strict regimen of antibiotics, and they treated half the patients with surgery. And the outcomes they found, they were looking to see is are the antibiotics no worse than surgery, which is kind of a funny way to phrase that, but they wanted, that's what they were trying to prove initially. They actually didn't prove that. They didn't get to that point in the study. But they did find that in general it seemed safe. The patients who ended up ultimately needing their appendix out, they didn't have additional complications or other challenges. 
And now they've looked at those same patients five years later to see who got appendicitis in those five years, how many of them needed surgery, and what were the outcomes of those patients. And they found about 39 to 40% of patients who were treated with antibiotics up front ultimately got Hmm. appendicitis um, in that five-year period. Most of them got it in the first year um, and then needed to go on and have treatment. And that treatment in this study was uh, typically surgery. Um, so that's, that's really what they found. I guess to me, the takeaway is, you know, in the right conditions for the right patient, antibiotics are a potential option. Um, with the caveat that mm, in about five years, you have a 40% chance of getting appendicitis again. (laughs) What are the risks of surgery? Because it it kind of it makes you wonder why why don't we treat this like wisdom teeth where if we don't need it just get rid of it before uh, everybody. it causes a problem. Yeah. And um so typically in this country we do ap- appendectomies laparoscopically or with small incisions. So we make small incisions, we put in kind of long handled instruments and a camera. We take the appendix out that way. It's almost I would say 90% of the time done that way. Very rarely are we doing open appendectomies on a routine patient. Now the study actually did open appendectomy routinely. So mm-hmm. it kind of makes their results a little bit tougher to interpret from a surgery perspective. The reason we don't just do surgery on everybody is, you know, there are risks with surgery, right? There's risk, small risk of bleeding, small risk of infection. You can get scar tissue on the inside that can lead to challenges down the road. You could injure other organs. Um, you do need a general anesthesia, so an overnight stay in the hospital. So it's not for nothing, which is why we don't just take it out. If you're not already going to, if you don't have a clinical indication or you're not having surgery for other reasons. But what we're trying to do, and correct me if I'm wrong, is find ways to use less antibiotics so that we don't build up antibiotic resistance. So that's what I thought was interesting about this. Why would you choose antibiotics when a relatively safe surgery, relatively easy, Mm -hmm. finger quote, surgery, would... um, Uh, avoid that. And that's one of the other interesting parts of the study. So as I said, it was a very strict regimen, I would say. They had three days of IV antibiotics, which mandated it that that the patients were in the hospital for those three days. And then they did a week of oral antibiotics, which is a pretty extensive regimen, very broad spectrum antibiotics. So as you mentioned, antibiotic resistance is a real risk. And they talked about that kind of in their commentary on their study, that this is a risk. And in future studies, they should look at narrowing the spectrum of antibiotics. But because it's so, you know, new, it would be tough for anybody to say, well, how long would you treat that for and what antibiotics would be the right? So that's why they did such a broad spectrum. But there is a risk if we treated everybody with that num- you know, that level of antibiotics that we could be developing antibiotic resistance. In their study, they found it was relatively better or not really better, but less inferior to the surgery because they did a lot of open surgeries. Mm-hmm. So the, the cost was lower with antibiotics. Uh, the time away from work was lower. Whereas in this country, if you have the surgery, you're usually in the hospital overnight, you go home the next day, you're probably out of work for true seven, 14 days, maybe at the most, and then you're back to work. So it's, it's a pretty limited amount of time. Why, when you were, we were starting to talk about this survey, did you say this is, this was done in Finland, only a place where Finland could do something well, like this? Yeah. So explain that comment to me. It can be a tough, it can, you know, it's a, it's a, it's really amazing that the study got done because you're really presenting a patient, you know, with here's a potential way that this could be treated. We don't know if it will work or not when they did their initial study. And we don't know if you're going to have increased complications if we give you these antibiotics, right? So they didn't know would people get um, more complicated appendicitis? Were they all going to rupture? Were they going to miss cancers? They didn't. They just didn't know. So, in our um, in our country, getting that approved through our IRBs that would be a potential challenge. And then getting patients to agree to that right. when they're in the emergency department, they're in a lot of pain. And now you're trying to tell them, well, you could have this kind of, you know, new age thing that may or may not work, or you can have this surgery that we've done for a long time and we know that it works. It, so that was a really impressive part to get that done. They also had really good follow-up. You know, there was like 257 patients treated with antibiotics, and in five years they followed 256 of them. That's amazing wow. to follow that many patients for five years and have that information. That's really amazing. So they did a really great job, and they should. And the, the team should be commended on that. They did an amazing job. It's fascinating. We've been talking about treatment for appendicitis with Mayo Clinic Trauma and Critical Care Specialist, Dr. Erica Loomis. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Loomis. Thank you so much. And that's our program for this week.